So we are here with the ex-director general of Al Jazeera, and my first question would be, how come did Al Jazeera start doing so many activities online? Actually, we saw in the social uh, networks as a great opportunity to establish real relationship with our audience. You understand that Al Jazeera during the last few years uh, did not have good relationship with governments. And therefore, governments didn't give us accreditation to cover stories, close down our bureaus. Now, you are in front of a new environment where bloggers and citizen journalists could actually substitute the absence of Al Jazeera professional camera from the field. So we thought that we need to have an alliance with social networks. In fact, we did even open Al Jazeera training center to train hundreds of bloggers and hundreds of social network activists and to give them basics of journalism. And then these people became actually great help for Al Jazeera, especially during the Arab Spring. So we did see in what's happening an opportunity, not a threat, because we were already under heavy pressure. And we thought more democracy could be achieved through this great relationship with social networks. Al Jazeera actually had a great role in what is called now the Arab Spring. So I would like to ask you uh, a few numbers, if you can give the, uh, them to us, of the, the quantity of, of information that actually was produced by the citizens and by the people. I would say that maybe up to 70% of what we received from Tunisia was done by social networks. Up to 90% sometimes of the news coming uh, to Al Jazeera screen during the uh, few days or certain days of the uh, revolution in Egypt was actually done by social networks, especially after the government decided to block Al Jazeera signal and to bring down Al Jazeera cameras. So, yes, I mean, definitely without social networks, it would have been impossible to cover the story as we did cover it uh, in Tunisia, in Egypt, in uh, Syria, and in many other parts of the Arab world as well. What about the safety of those who actually uh, do this kind of activity on the field? A lot of them actually have been um, arrested. Some of them have been even shot, like what happened in Syria. Some of the activists who used to film and send, uh, upload their images and their video clips on internet were actually killed. And they were targeted because I think governments have understood the risk that these people could pose to it and to its authoritarian grip on media and power. So I'm saying that these people have a mission they are very courageous, they are very creative, and they are very dynamic, and they exist in various places, and therefore we should encourage them, and we should support them, and we should educate them much more on professional journalism, so they could become smart citizen journalists. Um, the whole Arab Spring uh, revolution, um, sustained by the social networks uh, and the people who actually wrote and uh, produced content uh, that they then published online. Um, we could say, or at least uh, here in Italy, many have said that it, was, it worked because it was a particular historical moment. But how do you think it will evolve when things will settle down from a political point of view? I think right now we have gone through a phase where uh, democracy started to take some kind of shape in Egypt and in Tunisia, for example, and in Yemen. Uh, so therefore, the uh, role of social networks is not anymore to challenge authorities and to change the regime and so on. It is now actually to become part of developing this national dialogue, creating common values, and also trying to debate the transformation in a way that leads to stability. I think this is a great challenge, which I believe that youth at this stage are still trying to figure out how to deal with it because they were very active. They, they were at the center of events in Tahrir Square. But after elections, for example, they found themselves out of the political process. Maybe they have right now to find other ways of monitoring the process, encouraging the national debate, and developing civil society, monitoring of uh, uh, public rights and the constitutional rights as well. Uh, one last question which I'd like to ask you is um, what is the relationship right now between the common citizens, not the activists or those who actually really go on the field to, 
to film and, and document what's going on. But the common people and the traditional uh, news agencies or, or newspapers, do they, is there a trust relationship there? During the last few years, we had major problem of trust between citizens and audience and the, and the traditional mainstream broadcasters. Uh, in my opinion, a lot of them uh, have not favored the people, but did um, have some bias towards centers of powers and uh, towards corporate interest. Uh, I do believe that we are going through transformation. Good journalism will survive. Journalism that takes the people at the center of its editorial policy will survive. But journalism that is serving centers of powers might not, because people will have different alternative. People are not going to have uh, you know, only one or two channels to follow. They have not only huge amount of social networks uh, and uh, TV stations, but also they are capable of giving their opinion and debating and discussing and verifying things that are happening to them. So definitely the monopoly on journalism by centers of power is going to end and the new era of journalism that is revolving around people and the interest of the people and the quest for truth will emerge. Thank you so much for being with us today and for giving us your time. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Okay.